let's talk about a very special car today that just broke the Goodwood Hill Climb record, the McMurtry Spearling. I wanted to do a video about this car a while ago, but there was not much confirmed information about it. Now this changed around this year's Festival of Speed in Goodwood. The project started in 2016, when former aircraft engineer David McMurtry formed a group of XF1 engineers around him to build a lightweight electric track car. They were specifically looking at technology that had been banned in motorsports and since McMurtry was working on jet engines before, they decided to experiment with fan-driven vacuum systems. At first they needed a test vehicle which had enough space for the vacuum system and measuring equipment. So they wanted a van. But they needed a fast van because they wanted to test the system on racetracks. So they bought an old ambulance, the fastest van available. It must have been the weirdest test vehicle for a new generation of track cars people have ever seen. But the tests were successful and they could gain valuable experiences. They designed the Spearling from scratch with the vacuum system in its center. The result of earlier tests was that the vacuum area underneath the car doesn't actually have to be too large to generate a lot of downforce. In fact, the sealed area underneath is only about a square meter. In comparison, the floor area of the GT3 car is around 9 square meter. The seals are ceramic plates. The air is sucked out of the cavity through two fans. If the complete downforce of the car relies on a fan system only, you want more than one fan in case it fails. Another experience McMurtry brought in from aviation. The fans then push the air to the wake area at the back of the car, where they leave through relatively small outlets. This can then create some extra thrust for the car. One of the huge problems of the Brabham fan car in F1 was that it sucked dirt and stones up from the street and was shooting it towards the cars behind it. To avoid that, the Spearling has air filters which need regular cleaning. Another result of the intensive testing was that the better the ceiling works, the less power the fans need for the same amount of downforce. Something we know from Hoover's. So actually, by creating a decent seal, the power for the fence is relatively low and tends to zero. Another factor to make this car work is an active suspension to create a stable aero platform, so the ceiling and hence the fan system can work properly. But working with a fan car also means that you have to readjust to the new characteristics. The maximum downforce of 2000 kg is always available. And that is also the reason why the car has only rear-wheel drive. Because it always has traction, which enables 3G in corners, no matter what speed, and 1.4 seconds to 100 km per hour. And even for recuperation, it always has so much downforce that it can regenerate enough energy only through the rear wheels. And a quick comparison to Gordon Murray's fan car. Both are called fan car, but their systems are entirely different. The T50 has an aggressive diffuser shape, which separates the flow when the fan is off. Only when the fan is on, the low energy boundary layer is sucked away and the high energy flow can follow the aggressive shape. Check out my other video for more information. The Spurling, on the other hand, really just creates a rectangular vacuum underneath the car. The next interesting fact about the design is that because the fan system creates all the downforce, the Spurling is initially designed with a body that concentrates on drag reduction only, and not downforce like usual race cars. So the focus was on low drag and not downforce, because downforce comes from the fan system. But that on the other hand meant that the two tons of downforce are always there and also don't change with speed. A normal race car increases downforce with velocity squared. So, especially in high-speed corners, traditional race cars suddenly had more downforce than the Spurling. So, they added a two-element rear wing at the back that is backed off at the sides to reduce induced drag and backed off in the center because of the different approaching angle of the flow. With this wing, they add some traditional downforce to the car. And if you run such a fan car, you basically only need that vacuum area underneath the car and nothing else. So, similar to the Brabham fan car, there is no need for a diffuser. Also a good reason to position the license plate there. Interesting is also the downward slope of the bodywork at the sides. The air is guided directly to the radiators at the back. So when we saw the car driving at Goodwood, 
we could see how the dust of the street came out of the two outlets in the center and the wake expanded to the side behind the radiators. There was a bit of upwash because of the rear wing above, but not the amounts that we are used to from GT3 cars. The Sperling houses a self-developed and self-produced U-shaped battery. It wraps around the driver's seat and underneath the legs. It should be able to have a range of 500 km, which means an average consumption of 12 kilowatt hours on 100 km. The weight is little under 1000 kg, the power is 1000 horsepower. Interesting about driving a fan car is also that any additional ground clearance, for example if you drive over a curb, will decrease the ceiling effect and there will be a sudden loss of downforce. On the other hand, traditional downforce cars have to lift the brake while the car is slowing down because the downforce is reducing. Not here, because it always stays the same. Also, the downforce level of the fan system can be adjusted in any situation. You could even simulate a traditional speed-dependent downforce if you want. But, and that's the huge advantage, you can also switch the downforce off where you don't need it. On the straights, for example. Usual downforce cars have to deal with huge amounts of vertical force on the straights, which increases tire drag. Additionally, this means that these cars need to be built to withstand much more force, although it's unnecessary. The sparling can just switch the downforce off on the straights and hence doesn't experience these high unnecessary forces and hence can be designed lighter. So the McMurtry Sperling is a fascinating machine that picked up banned motorsport technology and developed it further to an amazing vehicle that also builds the bridge to future technology. Breaking the record at Goodwood gave them the attention they deserve and let's see how they will improve the car further. Let me know how you like the Sperling in the comments below and see you at the next video.